you to the members of the DPCC for that a very thorough and compelling presentation. Uh, we'll go here and then we'll alternate both sides. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. At this point, can you tell us if you are still expecting a vote this week on the Infrastructure and Build Back Better Act, and can you also elaborate on some of the outstanding issues that need to be resolved? Well, it's my hope uh, that we'll be in a position to be able to vote at some point this week, but the administration has been very clear uh, in terms of deadlines and timelines. Let's work through all of the outstanding issues uh, to get to a place where we can put these bills uh, to a vote, get them over the finish line, uh, and then get these things done for the American people. Our focus at the end of the day uh, is on making sure we create, as the DPCC has outlined, millions of good paying jobs, uh, that we cut taxes, families with children, and that we lower costs for everyday Americans. Uh, I think there's widespread agreement uh, that those are the right things to be doing on behalf of the American people. There's some technical issues that folks are working through uh, with respect to some of the climate uh, provisions and some of the health care provisions, but I believe at the end of the day, we're going to find common ground as we always do. So just to follow up on that, if it does come to the fore uh, this week, the Bill Back Better, do you believe that the Progressive Caucus will vote for the bill even without uh, an ironclad commitment uh, from for support from Senator Manchin? Well, I'll yield to any of my colleagues on this, but I believe uh, that we need an ironclad commitment as it relates to a framework around the Build Back Better Act that all 50 senators will support. I think that's been an understanding as we've proceeded from the very beginning. President Biden has laid that out. Speaker Pelosi has laid that out. I support the notion that we need an ironclad agreement uh, as it relates to all of the provisions of the Build Back Better Act that will be supported by 50 senators. Yeah. Go to the back. Um, um, okay. This side of the room, and then we'll go back to you. Yeah. Is, there, um, is there any further clarity on what will happen with the state and local tax reduction in the package? Will a repeal make it in there? And if so, will it be this option that's been under discussion for repealing the cap for two years and then reimposing it out through 2027? Well, I'm not going to comment on any of the particular proposals that have been discussed other than to reiterate my position uh, that we do need to address the state and local uh, tax deduction issue. Uh, as was pointed out by the DPCC, by Ted, one of the things that the Republicans did uh, when they had complete control of government, is to cut taxes for the wealthy, the well-off, and the well-connected, and raise taxes on the middle class by obliterating the SALT deduction, and we need to address that. Um, there are some moderates in the House who want a CBO score before they vote on the bill, um, but it sounds like from what Chairman Yarmouth was saying is that once there's bill text, it would take about two weeks for a CBO score. So how quickly do you think the House can realistically vote on the reconciliation bill, and that would that screw up the timing of the vote on the infrastructure bill? Well, the CBO score issue did not come up at today's discussion uh, for the caucus. I don't know if anyone had any. He takes all the tough questions, by the way. <laughs> would, you, would, but, would, you, would you like to see a score first? Or? I'm not going to comment on that one way or the other. I have no, no member has raised this issue with me until someone does, uh, I'll refrain from comment. It sounds like Senator Manchin, though, yesterday was sort of raising that as his issue, that he wants to see that. When you heard that from him, and I know that parts of it have already been scored, you guys have a sense of what's in it. Do you feel like he's still doing this in good faith, or that he's just trying to slow up the process at this point? Because it feel, felt like yesterday y'all were ready to go. I mean, the Senate is the Senate, and the price that we pay for the democracy that we have uh, in America, and I take every single senator in good faith in terms of the comments that they put into the public domain. I also believe that all 50 of them do want to uh, get the Build Back Better Act over the finish line, and I remain convinced of that fact. Because that didn't sound ironclad yesterday. Far from it, right? Until we have an ironclad agreement, it's not my uh, expectation that we'll vote. When there's an ironclad agreement, we'll go to the floor. Yeah. Uh, just a real quick point. When you look at this framework, 
uh, the revenues that we're getting in will exceed the current amount that's being projected as spent. So I don't think the CEO score is going to be much of a problem. I think for raising that point, which is also <clears throat> critically uh, important in the context of the Build Back Better Act and bipartisan infrastructure agreement, completely paid for, unlike the GOP tax scam, which provided 83% of the benefits to the wealthiest 1% in America and plunged us approximately $2 trillion more into debt unnecessarily. There's a big difference between the Republican reckless approach uh, and the Democrats who deliver approach to public policy. So, second one. Um, I want to ask about immigration. Um, so do you believe that Democrats will have provisions that can pass the parliamentarian? And if they don't pass the par parliamentarian, will Democrats be including them in this package anyways? Well, that's under discussion. I know Pete has been involved in a lot of these discussions. We do have a broken immigration system. We need to fix it. We're working through that issue, Pete. The, the president was clear after our meeting with a number of us on, on July 29th that he wanted immigration measures included in reconciliation. What we have talked about today is implementing the president's agenda. And part of that agenda is making sure that we fix our broken immigration system. We've been very clear on that. For far too long, our immigration system is left behind individuals who are working, going to school here, living here, going to church in our communities, uh, and we've left them behind. And so we want to write that. We want to help fix that. Uh, working through language uh, to do that and building support um, to do that is, is what we seek to do. That's what the President has asked us to do. Uh, the House and Senate are engaged in these efforts, and we're going to continue uh, down this road uh, as long as there are options. You didn't speak yet, right? No, sir. I was just wondering what you thought the results in Virginia would show to Democrats heading into the 2022 uh, midterms. <clears throat> well, since we're under the Capitol uh, Dome, I don't want to comment.